Hey guys, enjoying our reaction videos? If you are, please click the link to the reacted video in the description and show the creator lots of support. Thanks guys. You're just gonna die in the end. <laughs> okay guys, here we go with another Swag Kage video and as always, thank you very much Swag Kage for allowing us to share uh, your videos together for us to react to them here. It's it's a lot of fun. This is five underrated Naruto characters. This is a blast. I like comparing these. But even more, I was going to say I like comparing these to what I would see as my own five. But even more so, just hearing somebody else's take on this is always fun. And especially for me with the bad memory, there's always going to be somebody in there that I go, Oh, yeah, I forgot about him, forgot about her, or whatever the case may be. When I, I read this title, what popped right into my head, and I think you guys know this from the way I talked about it, is um, Aruka Sensei. I've always thought he was underrated. I really like that in the light novel section, he finally got recognition, but overall, I still think he was underrated. You know, another one that <sighs> probably surprised you guys, but I, I do think is a little bit on the underrated side too, is Kabuto. And, and again, not, not trying to suck up to that smarmy ass douche spent most of the series as the guy I hated the most, but given how many strings he was able to pull and how many things he accomplished during the fourth great ninja war. I don't think that's unrecognized. I think the fan base is well aware of what he did, but he certainly doesn't get put up on the pedestal as some others who maybe didn't even accomplish as much or accomplish about the same. I mean, when we think of the war arc, it's always, you know, it's obviously black Zetsu and Madara and Obito and, and, and deservedly so and Kaguya and all deservedly so, but, Kabuto played a huge, huge role in all that. It, it, and it's just one of many things, but just in the reanimation alone, I mean, that, that was just monstrous. So, uh, but again, he's got a top five list here. It's fun for me to see what other people think and then to see in the comments section what you guys think as well. But those are the two that popped to my head, hmm, hmm, popped in my head really quick. Let's see, let's see what Saikage's five are. Yo, how's it going everybody? Swag Kage here, and welcome to today's video. Uh, there's not much for me to say to preface it. The subject is pretty self-explanatory. It's about Naruto characters that I like, that I wish everybody else liked just a little bit more. But a few <laughs> things I want to get out of the way before we start. The list isn't in any particular order, so I'm not going to be counting down from 5 up to 1 or anything oh, that's like cool. that. And obviously, that's why I have trouble doing is disagree with the choices for making you think certain top choices. Did it better? That's fine. I don't think I speak for everybody here. But I've wanted to make a video like this for a long time because especially in the case of some of the characters on this list, I've never really received any opportunities to talk about why I like them at length, because nobody really gives a shit about them, and they weren't <laughs> relevant to any of the video topics I had before. But today, I'm gonna have myself a bunch of fun talking about all of these relatively obscure characters oh, now, see, that I wasn't nobody going... paid much attention to, and maybe hopefully changing a few people's minds. See, now, I, I looked at this a little bit differently then. I wasn't really looking for obscurity. I was just thinking of characters like, again, as I mentioned... Kabuto, hardly obscure. I just didn't think they got all the props they deserve. But I mean, still an interesting list. I just, I had the wrong impression apparently coming in. I still want to see, very much so now, even more so now, want to see what he came up with. Minds about them. I think that takes care of everything I wanted to say beforehand, so without further ado, let's just get started. The first character I want to talk about is Gosu. This mummy looking guy from part one worked under Orochimaru, got done super dirty. As a matter of fact, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Team, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they were done the, justice at all. The sound ninja. Used two of them as sacrifices for the Edo Tensei, and then Dosu just got fucking murdered by <laughs> Dara in his Shukaku form. And it was a really big shame because I liked Dosu. He was one of my favorite characters, wow. even when I was just a little kid. I, I barely remember him. him. When he got paired up with Shikamaru in the Chunin exams, I was geeked because Shikamaru was another one of my favorite characters. I wanted to see these two go at it. Dosu struck me as a very clever fighter, somebody who was incredibly meticulous, who knew when to back off, knew when to approach, and he had a really cool power in the form of his uh, sound attacks. Sound attack, his fight against yeah. Rock Lee was really cool. He just sort of went to town on him, and at the time, that was pretty crazy because we had just seen Lee kick the snot out of Sasuke a couple episodes earlier, then here comes Dosu treating him like a total bitch. But the 
probably <laughs> is. That's the only time you really get to see him. Bitched him down. Did have another fight against Choji in the tuning exam preliminary rounds, but that wasn't much of a fight at all. It just consisted of Dosu one-shotting Choji, then walking away. Then, before he could even make it to the final rounds, Gara killed him basically off-screen. In the end, he and the rest of the Sound Ninja practically amounted to nothing more than jobbers for Sasuke. Yeah, jobbers okay, I remember that up on... I, I do remember like that I part said, up on the really roof. really big shame. Dosu was easily one of the cool... It's sad that I don't remember... I should have remembered him more so because I remember that scene where Gara takes him out heartlessly as a huge pivotal moment for Gara's character, so... Yeah, that, that's a good point. I should have remembered his, well, my memory, but I should have given him more props just for being a part of that. Coolest characters we've ever gotten to see, and it really sucks because I never catch anyone talking about this guy. For numero dos, we have good old Grandma Tsunade, somebody who isn't quite as obscure as Dosu, but definitely a character that doesn't receive as much praise as I feel she deserves. Really? That one's Tsunade interesting to me. Cool fuck, okay? And it really hurts me knowing that she doesn't get any love just because the other two Sonin are so much more popular and are given significantly I love more her chest region. as well as significantly more to do than she is. But let me tell you why Tsunade is so awesome, because I used to think she was pretty lame. As a matter of fact, I used to actively dislike her. I couldn't tell huh. you why now, because every time I see her either on panel or on screen, she's doing something really cool. But the point is, I'm very aware that there are people out there who just don't think Tsunade is all that great. So to begin oh, my thesis see, I, about why that's not me. Cool, I, let's take I a look still at think she's awesome. She was introduced. Now this was back during part one, and it's pretty widely accepted throughout the community that part one has a much grittier, darker tone than Shippuden does overall, and that you could really tell Kishi Shimoto was aiming for something cynical and grounded. Tsunade was practically the embodiment of this cynicism. You can view a lot of the characters introduced in Naruto as foils to our main character for one reason or another, with the three strongest examples up to this point being Haku, Sasuke, and Gara. And to a certain extent, anyway, okay, Tsunade cool. is another example of one. She sort of existed as a yeah. living reality check for Naruto. Yeah, he was yeah, young, that's true. naive, and idealistic. Oh, she was old, experienced, boobs. and very jaded. She took pleasure in nothing but vices and was bitter through and through because she'd been stripped drinking of every gambling. source of hope and optimism that she'd that's ever why, had. That's why I love Tsunade, the drinking and, and gambling. it was just this neat, fresh perspective that the audience hadn't yet seen before. Then after she met Naruto, she went through this really touching character arc where she slowly learned to trust people more, to be more positive, and, and became, just be a better person became in general. A very good Hokage. in the entire manga is when she chokeslams these two leaf elders into the wall of the Hokage office for not having enough faith and Naruto, just as a sort of display of how much this kid means to her. <laughs> nice move, Tsunade, yeah. It's really cool by pointing out that she got slapped around by Kabuto. And that she, like, I didn't considered like killing those two elders, and you guys these, know that. more so the second one, are valid criticisms of her. You're allowed to dislike her for whatever reason if you want. But I think that both of those things just serve to make her more layered, more human, and it makes her change over time even more satisfying to watch. Then, of course, she's also just a fucking badass. Like, look at this panel right here where she threatens to kill Orochimaru. It looks so sick. She also puts in heavy work in the battle against Madara, and the fact that she's the best medical ninja, like, on the planet gives her extra cool points as well. The no, I, I, I think everything he says here is perfectly is valid. Iruka. Don't click off the video yet. I know nobody really cares about Iruka, but, like, hear me out, please. Really, my wow. love for Iruka just sort of boils down to, yeah, he's a pretty chill dude. And that's all there really is to it. But for those of you who want me to say more, I mean, he's he's just he's just this crucial part of... Absolutely. Life. Wow, I'm surprised Iruka still made his list. I'm, I'm glad. I don't know if, like, anybody else is the same way. But just seeing this guy, you know, Iruka, acting as a father figure. Yeah. This little kid. I, I, think, I think he's... That he can rely monstrously on. huge to this entire story whether you're just starting the series or you've gotten all the way to the end you know that naruto deserves somebody like this and the way he right. practically bent over backwards for the kid this is cool. risked his life for him in the first episode and the first chapter of the manga i mean it, it's just impossible for me not to appreciate now i know that yep. this guy Boy, we're on board there no screen time as a matter of fact sympathetical there less screen time than everyone great else scene on right this there list, dosu included and all he ever like really does is to take a shuriken to the back, then you don't see him again all that much, like ever. But all of my points still stand. I've always liked Iruka. I think that the series would be a little bit weaker if he wasn't the part of yep. it. And I just Completely think that everybody agree. should appreciate him a little bit more than they do. Next in line, nice. we have the ultimate trap himself, Haku. Who Haku! Had the coolest <laughs> jutsu in the whole series. 
series. One of the coolest designs in the whole series. But I am still yeah. a bit confused as to why Kishimoto decided to go the whole I'm going to make him look like a really pretty girl even though he's a dude, right? Like, it's not yeah. like he even identifies as a girl. He just flat out says, I'm a dude. Uh, right, right. It is. It is. Him as a that is kind of mysterious. I, that I thought as well. What Naruto was comments the point? That Haku is prettier than Sakura. So, you know, it, I don't know. I, it's, I it's guess true. it's just funny. Regardless, Haku <laughs> is a pretty unique character. Not to say that he's like one of a kind and there's nobody else like him in all of fiction. But I think this idea of a kid who worships somebody just because they saved them from a shittier life and views themselves as nothing more than a tool. A tool for, for that question. person. Yeah. It's just cool. I was actually going to put Kimimaro on this list alongside Haku. Oh. But then I realized that they're practically the same character. Yeah, Kimimaro, yeah. He gets the Kimimaro would have made my list. Instead of Kimimaro. You guys know I really like Kimimaro. to Mr. Bone Man. Kimimaro's probably got like my favorite Keke Genkai ever, even despite the fact that it doesn't really make any sense. But anyway, this isn't about Kimimaro. It's about that's Haku. Like I said, his That's a really good call, Kimimaro. I would definitely have him on my list of five underrated. Zabaza is really special, and I think it's always made him a really standout character for me. Not to mention, he's just got a really sick fighting style. He can weave yep. seals with just one of his hands. The crystal ice mirrors are fucking crazy. Crystal ice Zabuza mirrors are cool as hell. That he's stronger than fucking Kakashi is, and ice release is without a shadow of a doubt the coolest nature transformation there is. Even putting all that aside, Haku ended up maybe indirectly, I guess, bringing Zabaza to tears. So no matter what, you've got to at least appreciate him for being capable of doing that i don't want to start yeah. sounding redundant but i mean really everything about yeah, that's him is a good call really cool. i like the way he speaks the way he fights all of his abilities his backstory it makes it makes it a strong a case for him and, and sort of and again i ended up really liking zabuza and haku scene that i really like where kakashi is about to kill like zabuza you. with the raikiri and haku's standing still at naruto's mercy and just as naruto gets the resolve to finally kill him he whooshes over in between kakashi and zabuza in the nick of time just to save his master Master's life. Yep. Haku's just responsible for a whole bunch of really cool, really emotional shit in early Naruto. And I know that well a done. lot of people like Good him call. quite a bit, but I don't think he gets as much recognition as he deserves. Finally, the last entry on the list is Very the cool. man like puppet, human puppet, adding puppet Kimi man, too. whatever, Sorcery of the Red Sand. Probably my favorite member of the Akatsuki, at least next to everybody's favorite, Itachi, Obito, and Pain. But still, Sorcery no. is fucking awesome. My favorite a lot of people don't Akatsuki play, Remember, he done. Because one, he quote unquote lost to Sakura. Two, he's a puppet <laughs> master. And Kakuro kind of sucks. So puppet masters don't really have the best rap. Then three, he's a self contained character that's introduced oh, poor in the welfare same Batman. arc as he dies in. So he's not really given a whole lot to do. But I don't care about any of that. Sasori's the man. And let me explain why. All of my okay. reasons for liking Sasori. Yeah, Sasuri him, are him I wouldn't be as on board with. Cool factor I think he has. I just think that the guy is awesome. Turned himself into a puppet. Turned the third Kazekage into a puppet after he murdered him is capable of controlling up to a hundred puppets at once can yeah, administer cool. lethal poisons with ease that have basically no known cures has a sick design has an equally awesome voice and overall attitude i mean the guy is just really fucking cool and so many people give him shit for losing to sakura but like look dude he, he didn't is lose a cool sakura. character he but lost yeah to the team i of wouldn't sakura and, and Chiyo. granny Chiyo. Chiyo. everything about him both of them i wouldn't have him on my personal list but I, I, but i get it to though. counter his poisons Chiyo was in possession of the 10 strongest puppets ever created Sasori didn't really take the battle all too seriously until the very very end and of course finally it's heavily implied that he let himself he let die. himself it's lose not yeah flat out yeah. stated yeah that he like gave up or anything but we had Chiyo conversations that about really that when we were at that part could have to avoid the final attack that they threw at him so the idea that Sakura beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight is very very misinformed Plus, I mean, Sakura's no, not that bad. She's and pretty And Chio, if he did lose I think, fight, was the cornerstone like of that, that fight. Would be the ultimate L one could receive. Really, my reasons for liking Sasori are just super subjective. Either you agree that he gives off this cool vibe, or you don't. I don't think <laughs> there's much I can say to change your mind about him. Anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure that wraps up the list. I believe I've said everything that I had to say about all the characters here. Now, I am curious to know what characters you guys think are underrated. As always, leave your responses 
answers in the comments below. If yeah, this is here, this is fun. Subscribing to get updates when I post new videos. But above all else, just make sure you have a great rest of the day. Till my next video, talk to you later. Swaikage out. Bye. Yeah, nicely done, Swaikage. Yeah. Now for me, I, well, obviously a big hunk of that I agree with because I was I, I, when I heard where he was going with it at the top, I was like, oh crap. But but we did end up going in basically the same direction with it. I was really really glad to see Aruka Sensei on there because that again. When I read this title, that was that was my first thought. And Haku, I think I think all of them are great picks. I, I, I just and again, as Swaikage said, you know, it's personal preferences. I wouldn't have put Sasori on the list, but I get why he did. It just that wouldn't be one for me. Uh, definitely, Kimi Morrow. That was a good, even though he wasn't officially part of the list. That was a great call. Now for me, had I sat down and remembered all the characters and everything, Kimi Morrow would have definitely been on my list. I don't know about Haku, probably not, but Kimi Morrow definitely would have. But yeah, I like that. I, I, I think again, I think they're all solid picks. The only one I definitely, I know for sure, I wouldn't have on mine is Sasori. But again, I understand why he did. But that's that's what makes these fun is getting other people's perspectives on things. That that was really cool. I want I want to I got to find some more uh, Soikage Nux. I got to find more of their videos like this. This is a lot of fun.